my name's Josephine Roach, and I live in Oakland Township, Michigan. And that's a suburb of Detroit, if you're familiar with the United States. Hello, and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewafo. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. I'm a five-year breast cancer survivor. I'm an advocate for breast cancer. I like to spread awareness. I'm an author. Uh, previously, uh, I was in healthcare as a physician assistant, and so I worked in internal medicine. My family uh, came from Italy. Um, my mother, my father, and all my siblings were that is born. great. <laughs> yeah, they were all um, there. My father and mother came here in their early 30s, um, so it was um, the late 50s, you know, 1950s that they came to America and started a better life, right? My father wanted a better life for his family. So they uh, immigrated here and then I was born, uh, you know, in 1967. So later in life uh, for my parents. And, uh, you know, we share a lot of the Italian culture and uh, I'm married, I have no children, but I have a large uh, family with my siblings and their children and their grandchildren. So lots of nieces and nephews. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you so much for that sharing. That is really very important. We, we love stories a lot. You know? Like I often say here uh, to my guests, um, it is good that we talk about what we do, but it's also good that we talk about ourselves. Who are we? Mm -hmm. Why do we do what we do? This is how we're able to connect with other people. So I really want to thank you for that sharing. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right, now take me into uh, about what you do. How did you start with um, uh, breast cancer? A kind of campaign, as it were, uh, sensitization about breast cancer. How did you get into this? Sure. Um, so, like I said, I was a physician assistant. That was my career. That's what I went to college for. So, I don't know if they have PAs in uh, Italy or uh, in different parts of the world, but here in the United States, a physician assistant works under the care. Uh, under the direction of a physician, but we do many things that a physician can do. Um, so I was always interested in healthcare, so that was my career. And my mother uh, ended up having a stroke, so I ended up having, um, I decided to leave my career to care for my mother because she was um, quite, de you know, debilitated. And I wanted to, uh, it took a lot of my time, but so, and because I left my career, I thought, well, I need to do something else besides care for my mother. So what I did was I looked for some volunteer experiences in healthcare. And that's when I joined um, the Susan Homan Foundation in Detroit. And I started as a volunteer and that was uh, about nine years ago, around this time, nine years ago. And I, I was a volunteer because I uh, was very interested in women's health. And as a physician assistant, um, you know, I did the breast exams, I um, ordered the mammograms, I read the reports, I would send them on to breast surgeons if anything was um, abnormal. So it was a good fit for me as a volunteer. And then, boy, you know, four years into my volunteer work, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I was not, I did not, I was I was not a breast cancer uh, survivor prior to joining Susan G. Komen. So, um, so what we do at Komen uh, is uh, we organize a, a race. I know there's one in Rome. Um, it's the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. And the money that uh, we raise here uh, goes to research and to help others with breast cancer and get them through uh, their treatments those that need help um, financially. And, you know, I just really, once I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, it was almost a calling for me because I really didn't understand what those patients were going through initially when I joined Komen. And then when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I really understood, you know, why we were raising the dollars, who we were raising money for, and who we were supporting. Because now I was a breast cancer patient. And then I went through treatment, a year of treatment. 
And I got through it. And like I said, I'm a five-year survivor today. So what I do is I like to educate on breast cancer. I have a support group on Facebook um, for breast cancer survivors and thrivers. And and, uh, we call them co-survivors, those people that walk alongside us while we're going through our journey. And then most recently here in August, I published a book in regard to my breast cancer journey. We are coming to the book just now. That is also uh, a very important part of the conversation because uh, now you have went through a process. First, you went there because you love to help people, people in the community. But I don't know what to call that. It's a coincidence, a very strange coincidence that uh, what you were helping people to understand, it happens to you. Now you have the first time experience, the first person's experience. So that now instead of talking about how it happens to people, it starts with how it happens to you. So it changes the whole narration altogether. What has happened has happened. Uh, we are happy that you are here. You are a survivor of the of the experience. So now you are telling the story. Now, help me understand this. What do you want people to know about breast cancer? Well, there's a couple things I want people to know. You know, unfortunately, one in eight women will get breast cancer in their lifetime. That's one in eight. So we pretty much will know somebody that's touched by breast cancer and that it can happen to anybody. It, you don't have, uh, you know, that's a misconception that breast cancer has to be in your family in order for you to get breast cancer. Only 15% of breast cancers are genetic. Okay. So mine was not. And, um, you know, being a woman and getting older are the two largest risk factors of getting breast cancer. So writing this book, I wanted to encourage women, get your yearly mammogram, get the screening, because that's um, how you're going to find the cancer and hopefully find it early enough to be treated. And then, you know, hopefully, or you know, be a survivor of it. So writing the book, and then um, also writing my experience, because a lot of times people don't want to talk about something like breast cancer, um, because, you know, it's not pleasant. And unfortunately, because it's um, your breasts, people don't want to talk about something as sensitive as that. So by me opening up and talking about what I went through from the minute I was you know, had my mammogram through, through, uh, you know, the surgery to um, the treatments all the way into survivorship. And then understanding that I want to give people hope that it's all doable. It's doable. You know, I got through it. I hope when other people look, they'll realize if they up my book, that they will also be able, you know, to get through it and give them hope. Thank you for that. That is important. Uh, we need hope. Uh, we, we need to be able to have um, the, the possibility of understanding that at the end of the tunnel there is light. Otherwise, uh, there, is no, there is no need. Uh, we just, it's going to be very complicated if, if there is no hope. Thank you for sharing that. Now, are there some common causes of breast cancer so that people should sort of avoid, maybe it's something that people need to do, women need to do, to avoid breast cancer? Well, you know, um, before I had breast cancer, um, you know, I was pretty healthy, I thought, you know, my, you know, I had my physical exam every year, you know, and I was, I was healthy. And I, I did, you know, all the tests required, my blood work was good. So unfortunately, you know, that wasn't a factor. We don't know what causes breast cancer. And so that's the problem. <laughs> you know, if we knew then I think it would be easier to find a cure. There's lots of different types of breast cancer. Again, not many people would know that. And me as a health professional didn't know that either until I was diagnosed. So there is lots of um, things you can do, though. I mean, after the fact, uh, I did seek out uh, here in the United States a naturopathic oncologist um, in integrative medicine. So she treated the whole my whole body. So what she did is she looked at my blood work, um, suggested supplements, vitamins um, that would help me stay healthy. 
And then also uh, met with another doctor who looked at my nutrition. And because my breast cancer was what's called hormone, it was triple positive. It was positive for estrogen and progesterone. And those are hormones um, that we have. Um, I stay away from uh, things that we eat that have hormones like cheeses, like meat, chicken. I stay away from all those things. So I eat fish and lots of organic fruits and vegetables in my diet and I exercise. Um, it's shown that exercise increases. Um, you will help again with breast cancer as far as it'll encourage, it'll just make you more healthy. So, uh, you know, the recommendation just went up to 300 minutes a week of cardiovascular exercise. Um, so that's quite a bit, but you know, I, I do that. Uh, I'm working up to the 300 minutes, but, uh, so those are things that you can do that, I mean, it, there's no guarantees in life, but you know what, by doing these things that I just said, it's not only going to help you with, uh, you know, breast cancer, but it's going to help you with other diseases out there, you know, maintaining a healthy weight also. Thank you for that, Josephine. Um, now, before we talk about your book, um, I'm sort of curious, no? I mean, what are uh, medical... Uh, literature telling us about breast cancer. This is something, is this something that is new in our history? Because we'll be here for uh, several uh, several years, several thousands of years as a species, you know? Uh, is this something that is new in the, in the medical journey or we have been suffering from it for a very long time? Because you just said that we still do not know what causes it. Uh, so what can you tell me about that in terms of what the medical literature is telling us of cancer, the history of it, and just tell us anything you want to share with us in terms of for how long I will be suffering from it. Sure. I can just give you an example. So for example, again, my breast cancer was triple positive. And um, like I said, it was positive for estrogen, progesterone, and HER2, which is another hormone. So um, about 20 some years ago, a doctor out in California uh, discovered a drug because people were dying of my cancer that I had. And he uh, did the research, um, isolated, and realized that this HER2 was what was replicating quickly and was causing cancer. And he then worked on a drug to block development of this HER2. So it takes a long time from, from you know, you know, actually discovering a drug to go all the way till getting through here, which is called the FDA, through the Drug Administration to then get to the patient. So he worked on this for many years. A lot of times people say, well, why isn't there a cure? How come it takes so long? Well, it takes so long because you need to have clinical trials. You need studies done. So thank goodness that this doctor developed this drug and it was called Herceptin 20 some years ago. Had he not, I wouldn't be talking to you today. The cancer would have killed me. People were dying of this type of cancer I have. So again, we're it's progress, lots of progress. It just takes time and it, you know, and, you know, for developing these drugs. So once they, you know, isolate things, then, you know, so what's going on and, and I think what's going to come into the future is um, antibody, um, I'm sorry, immunization. Um, hopefully down the road, you know, they can develop uh, something that you can get an immunization for and then not ever get breast cancer. So that's sort of where it's going. The development, there's always new studies, um, new drugs. Um, there's lots of research here. Um, and again, I work with the Komen Foundation, and, and that 25% of the money we raise in the foundation goes toward research so we can find a cure. 
So uh, currently, as we talk, uh, there are cure for uh, certain types of cancer because you, you did say that there are different types. It's not just one bracket uh, cancer. Okay, for those who do not understand it, it's just cancer. But uh, those who understand it come to, like you now, you know that there are different branches, there are different types of it. Uh, so uh, when you say there are cure, because you are a survivor, that is why you are here today. Uh, so it means that there are some that people can have and they get a cure. Uh, which are the ones that, that are more dangerous? Which are the ones that... Uh, how do you know mm, the, the one that is less dangerous, the, the one that is less risky, as it were? I mean, with that. So that's a, a, a tough question, and that is a good question. Now, I'm not saying, um, you know, that medication, did it cure me? Well, it stopped the development of HER2, okay? But that doesn't mean that down the road, it might kick back up again. Unfortunately, that's the problem because there isn't a definite, like I said, if we can get to an immunization or what they really want to do to, so nobody would ever, you know, have this problem, that would be, you know, obviously the cure. Um, there are many different types of breast cancer. So I cannot say specific because what it is, is they stage the breast cancer. So you know, I had um, what's called stage one, um, even though people say, wow, you know, you stage it stage one all the way to stage four. Stage four means that it has now traveled to different body parts. It's gone to your lymph nodes and now into your organs. So uh, that person lives with breast cancer for the rest of their life. It's called metastatic breast cancer. Um, and then in between, you have all these other people, depending on if it stayed contained in the breast, if it had spread, if it's in a milk duct, is, is it contained? Has it grown, grown outside of a milk duct? Has it gone to the lymph node? So to answer the question of what is the worst, I, I really can't because it depends on the type, but then also the staging. Thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate that. Uh, now, uh, for mm, a layman point of view, uh, I don't know if you can paint a picture for for us, for people who do not understand um, uh, the, uh, the 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 integrity of this cancer. Is it like um, how, how does it work in the human body that is uh, a kind of a risk? Is it like a kind of infection which then grow and continue to suck up the, the energy of the human being and then grow to, okay, what kind of picture can you paint for us, for people who do who have no, absolutely no idea of what is a cancer inside human body? Well, you know, we have regular, you know, we're made up of cells, right? Mm, we're made up of cells that makes up our body. And sometimes there's a blip or a problem with the replication because our cells are constantly being developed and replicating and dividing. Sometimes there's a, a little error, see? And when that happens, depending on what that error is in the development, then all of a sudden now you have a different cell that's a cancer cell. And then the cancer cell starts developing and replicating faster than these normal cells. And then that's when a cancer starts to grow. All right. Thank you for that. I, I know that for people to get more of this, of course, they are going to have to read your book where you took the time to be able to put it down. <laughs> now, let's come to the book. Uh, tell me something about the book, kind of a general information about the book. Then, of course, I'm going to ask you a few things related to the book. Um, if, of course, for all of you that are listening, check out the book. It's available on Amazon. That is very important because... Um, uh, Josephine have taken time to explain her own, uh, her own experience, put it in out there for you so that you can learn. The purpose is for you to learn so you can avoid it. So, of course, here right now, she's going to uh, talk about, uh, about the book. Um, yeah, give us some kind of information, then I'm going to ask you a few things relating to the book. Please go ahead. Well, I have a copy of my book here, right? It's called Josephine's Journey, A Breast Cancer Survivor's Story of Hope. That's me. I'm Josephine Roach. I'm the author. Um, so what I did is when I um, when I was going through my cancer journey, I journaled, meaning I wrote what I was going through. And I had done this throughout my life, you know, writing about your feelings or certain things that go you go through as you're uh, growing up. And when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, 
you see so many doctors, so much information is thrown at you that, you know, I had to write it down. You know, I started writing it all down to keep everything straight. Then I started writing about the feelings. You know, how did I feel about this? Here, I'm a, here, I'm a volunteer helping breast cancer patients. And now I'm one of them. Okay. So uh, how did I feel about that? And uh, then I go through my surgery. You know, I'm diagnosed with breast cancer. And again, I want to emphasize, get your yearly mammogram. It saved, you know, it can save your life. That's what saved my life. You know, that's where my breast cancer was found. So I talk about that. And I talk about, um, you know, going through the uh, biopsy to uh, then give me the diagnosis of breast cancer, then through the surgery. And, you know, I had to go through extensive treatment, which included um, 12 weeks of chemotherapy, uh, going once a week for 12 weeks. And, you know, what were some of those side effects? I talk about losing my hair, which is quite devastating. Um, and all the other side effects of, you know, that go along with it. And then I went on to radiation. And that's a whole nother thing that you have to go through and experience. And then I'm into survivorship. And like I said, I also received that special drug, Herceptin, that um, was quite life-saving to me. But, um, and then I'm into survivorship. So I, I sort of, you know, chronicle my whole journey. It's about a year of my life in, in 2017 uh, to 2018. Uh, my husband writes a chapter in the book, which again is very important. Uh, his feelings, um, what he did right, what he did wrong, what he'd do different. Uh, so I think that's a good perspective uh, to go through that. And I, and I talk about the people that I encounter along the way, uh, my spirituality and how that came into play. And again, just giving hope, a uh, positive attitude. I mean, I wasn't positive all the time, but I think uh, having a positive attitude helps too. Thank you for that. Now, at what point in your journey um, did you decide that you were going to write this book? Was there anything that actually led you to make that decision? Help us understand that. So like I said, I had, journ I had uh, journaled it all. So what I would do is sometimes I'd come home from a doctor's appointment or from a treatment session of chemo or maybe the day before, and I'd write down the date, what I went through, my feelings, how I felt, what happened that day. And so I had a nice record of that, you know, just because it helped me therapeutically to write this down. So I had this journal uh, and it was separate. I had a separate journal. It was called my cancer journal that I wrote in. Um, and I thought in the back of my head, you know, maybe someday I could write a book. Maybe this could help somebody, you know, go get that mammogram that they might be putting off. You know, we're living in COVID. And unfortunately, you know, the last time I went to see my oncologist, they said a lot of people have put off their mammograms. So they're seeing, you know, mammograms later. But anyhow, um, so what I did was um, in 2020, um, my mother passed away and there was a big uh, emptiness basically in my uh, life because uh, she, I took a lot of time, you know, I took a lot of time um, talking uh, to caring for her. So I thought, well, now maybe this is the time to maybe think about writing a book. Um, I had started talking about breast cancer, and I had a Zoom series that started in 2021, January of 2021, where I started talking a little bit about my breast cancer journey, talked about patient education and awareness on breast cancer. And I did that series, that Zoom series, once a month from January all the way to October of 2021. And basically the book was sort of written there with my Zoom series because I sort of took you through. And so that's sort of that's how it all started. Uh, you know, I had the time when my mother passed, it filled an emptiness that I needed to have filled. And so that's what then I incur, you know, made me decide to write the book and people encouraging me that more people needed to know about it. Thank you for the for the loss of your of your mother and um, and what you went through, of course, and yeah, it is not an easy thing. Uh, now you've decided to share with people 
uh, and now and that sort of uh, prompt me into the question what is the message what is the central message of this book that you want to transmit to the people so the message is <laughs> get your yearly mammogram it could save your life it saved mine and by you doing that that could make a difference yes i did get cancer yes i did my yearly mammogram but had i not had it it would have grown it would have it was very aggressive it would have i would have you know i would have died from it had i not if we didn't have these screenings see we have these screenings go and get screened that's the message i have but then also the second message is if you are diagnosed you can get through it it is doable you know with support love, whatever your faith based is, you know, you can get through it. Is it tough? Yes, it's not easy. But listen, I got through it, I would hope when somebody reads my story, they're encouraged and know, you know what, I can get through it too. What would be the, um, some of the key points you want people to take away from this book? Because now we are telling that I just said it a few minutes ago before I started to ask you a question about the book that they should go there and get the book. It is right that they get the book and read it. Now, uh, I'm not saying do the spoiler, but at least some of the key thing that you 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 think people can take away from this book, the, the key message, anything you want to touch there um, for the people, please go ahead and do that. So if you are faced with a diagnosis, and this uh, with breast cancer or with any type of diagnosis, but specifically to my book, and you read my story, I encourage people um, to get second opinions. You know, um, you don't have to go with the first doctor. And again, if you read my story, you'll see what I did. Um, and, you know, give yourself options because this is your body and this is your right. So when you're, this is serious, right? This is life and death. So when you're choosing a physician, it should be somebody that you really connect with and you're very comfortable with. So that's the first thing. If you're diagnosed, I would encourage you to get a second opinion and then weigh out. If they both say the exact same thing, then you decide which doctor was, is best for me. And take and you know and go from there. So that's one one thing that I encourage people to do because I think we need to take some sort of control. The cancer is not in our control right now when you're diagnosed, but selecting a physician is and the correct um, surgeon for you and the and the correct you know uh, center. You know here in Detroit we're very fortunate we have a cancer center, and that was my choice. I went a 50 minute drive because I wanted to go to a cancer center. That was my choice. I'm not saying every person should go to a cancer center. I'm just saying those were my choices. So that's something, you know, very important. And then also when you're reading the book and you're seeing um, the treatments I went through, um, again, connecting with the emotions and then somebody reading it, you know, because you're feeling out of control sometimes. And at least then, you know that you're not alone. Wow, you know, Josephine went through that. She was talking about when she lost her hair and how traumatic that was. You know, that's traumatic for me too. So then it then, you know, solidifies a person's feelings like, oh, this isn't, she went through this too. So these are some of the takeaways that I think are very important in support. I encourage, you know, you don't have to do this alone. And I, I hope that you never have to do it alone family support, friends, co-workers, you know, they all rallied around me. It made a big difference. And talk to people. Like you said, like I am an advocate. Talk to other people that have breast cancer. Don't keep it inside. Because we can't journey this, uh, this world alone. We need each other. We need the support of each other. That is, that is so important. Yes. All right. Now, everything that has happened I like the particular chapter. That is the last, chap the last uh, chapter of the book, chapter 19. The new me. Tell me something about that. Why did you give me that kind of chapter? Tell me, what is the central message that you want people to get away from there? The new me. Well, you know, when you go through something like cancer, or any type of life experience that's life-altering, life-changing, um, you know, it did. It changed me. Uh, a cancer diagnosis shakes you. 
And, you know, I was 50 years old, and I think that's pretty young to be diagnosed with a cancer. And um, it, it made me evaluate my life. What's important? You know, what's important to me? Um, is money important? Well, I guess I needed money <laughs> to get through some of these treatments. So that was good. And I had good insurance. But what's important is people, the people in your life. I made sure I told people what they meant to me when before, you know, you know, people or that you care about your family. But you know what? Tell them you love them. Do the things that you put off because we never know how much time we have on this earth. We do not know. So take that vacation that maybe you're putting off. Do a career change. You know, look what I, 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 I have a total new career change. Believe this or not, the silver lining to getting breast cancer. I'm an author. I talk about breast cancer. This is my calling. And I think that's the new me. The new me is more confident. And, you know, like I said, I, it's right at the end of the, the last chapter, right? What does it say? <laughs> chapter 19, the last sentence. What does it say? You know, uh, I talk about my hair, you know, my new hair is silver, right? And that's a silver lining to my cancer. And now I look at myself in the mirror and know who's staring back at me. And that woman is strong and can withstand much more than she ever imagined. So that's really the new me. Now, there's another thing I, I want you to say something about uh, in the book is, uh, is the cover. Uh, what does it mean to you, the way you design it? I can, okay, let, let me show it to the people. Uh, I wanted to say something about it, uh, a kind of a message, the kind of idea you have about the cover that you designed for this book. Yes, thank you for asking that. Um, as you see, it's um, the light shining through um, the sun, uh, this, through the clouds, right? And when it came to deciding on what... I wanted my cover to be, well, as you see, my by, my subtitle is a breast cancer survivor's story of hope, right? So I wanted, even though breast cancer is very, very serious, I wanted to convey in my on my cover something very positive. So this, the cover of my book is an actual photograph that I took um, five years ago now. Five years ago, I was stopped at a stoplight. I was going to see the breast surgeon, and the breast surgeon was going to explain the biopsy. I didn't know if I had breast cancer yet at that point, but it was scary. I was stopped at that light, and I looked up, and that is what I saw. And I took a picture because I it gave me hope because I thought, I'm, I'm scared. I kept it in my phone for five years. And when it came time to design my cover, I thought, that's the cover. I kept it for a reason. And I hope that it gives other people hope because it did me. Thank you for that. All right. Talking about uh, this advocacy that you are doing uh, right now, which is about um, you are sensitizing people about breast cancer. And it's really important as a project. Um, now, I wanted you to tell me there is any looking at maybe medical research, people that are working uh, in the field to find a solution to breast cancer. Of course, now we know, thanks to your explanation, that uh, there are different types of breast cancer. There are some of them that already have a cure or that can, there are drugs that you can take to put them under control. But we as a humanity, we are hoping that one day um, breast cancer can be like any like headache. You are sick of it, you just go to the hospital and the doctor administer drugs to you, it is over. That is where we want the we want the system to get to at a point so that you are not afraid anymore. If you feel like you are having a headache, you just take some pee, is is gone. So share with me what can you what what do people need to know about the research that is going on? What are the hope that people have in terms of uh, the study that is going on to sort of find a solution? a definite solution to breast cancer. 
So again, I want to reiterate, there is no cure. So I can't say that I was cured of cancer. I No, I was not. I, I guess you would call that I'm in remission and that I'm a survivor. So I, I so there is no, I mean, like I said, the, the medication was great because it saved me, but that's no guarantee either. So I just want to be clear on that point. Um, the research that's being done, for instance, here in Detroit, we have the Cancer Institute, we have uh, Wayne State um, Medical School, and um, they have uh, scientists there that are doing what are called clinical studies. So as they develop the drugs, they put people who uh, maybe have a specific, you know, cancer that they're trying to um, target and you get into this clinical study and you receive these drugs to see, is this going to help slow the progression? Is it going to help, you know, block the production of these cancer cells? And that's, that's what's going on. I, I can't speak to specific research um, because I don't know all the specific research. Actually, something just came down. I just received something in an email that I need to read about, about my specific cancer, because even since I was diagnosed, you know, there's new drugs that have come out for my cancer. And also radiation. I went to a cancer symposium where oncologists spoke um, through the Carmanos Cancer Institute here in Detroit. And, um, you know, I had radiation. And when you have radiation, you know, the beams go through you. And unfortunately, um, depending on where your the cancer was, because they're still trying to kill anything that's left there, even after the tumor has been taken out with surgery, um, it can affect organs. That radiation might, like for me, for me, for instance, the doctor explained that it would uh, affect, it might hit the top of my lung, and he had to discuss what that might look like, right? But now I went to the symposium a couple months ago. And they have a new radiation, and it it doesn't go through the organ. It stops where it needs to stop, so it's not going to affect your organs. It's just going to take care of the errat, you know, do the radiation to the area. It's pro, um, proton. I forgot the exact name for it, but I was just amazed. I thought, wow! In just the five years that I have been out from my cancer, look what's already there's been advances. So. I think there's going to be constant advances, you know, and I can't speak to, uh, you know, what exactly all that is. But I know, like I said, there's two drugs, I think, since I've been, um, you know, out from treatment that have been developed. So it, they're constantly working on it. All right. That's great. Thank you for that. Uh, that is important also for people to know that there is uh, work going on, there is studies going on to be able to find a solution to that. Uh, thank you again for the for the sharing. Uh, so maybe people want to um, connect with you. They want to know more about what you do or why not. They want to buy your book. I wanted to use these few seconds to promote yourself. Tell people how to get connected to you. Please go. Oh, okay, sure. So again, my book is called Josephine's Journey, A Breast Cancer Survivor Stories of, Story of Hope. And um, you can get it on Amazon. And I'm happy that you got it because it looks like you uh, have a copy there. And... Um, I'm on all social media platforms. So on Facebook, you can connect with me through Messenger. Um, it's Josephine Fide, F-I-D-E-I -E Roach. That's on Facebook. And like I said, I run a support group. On Facebook, you can go to Where Hope Begins. And of course, hope is my word. So all capitals. H-O-P-E, where hope begins, and that's my cancer support group. So you can um, answer a couple questions, and I let you in the group. You can connect with me on Instagram. I'm Josephine Roach Survivor. And then also on LinkedIn, uh, you know, under Josephine Roach. So those are the ways you can contact me. You can also contact me via email at – I'm going to give you this row. Um, it's J Roach R-O-A-C-H. 110 at Comcast, C O M C A S T dot net. Now, what would be your final thought here to conclude the conversation? What would be maybe a kind of a message or a reflection, uh, something to conclude the conversation? Please go ahead and do that. First of all, I'd like to thank 
you for having me as a guest here. I was very excited to hear that you are in Italy. So, um, and that's my family's home, you know, their country. So I was very happy about that. But um, the my, a parting message, and I know I've said it, but it is just so important is to get your yearly mammogram, okay? Get your yearly mammogram. It could save your life. It saved mine. And that, you know, when you're faced with adversity, when you're faced with a diagnosis, it doesn't have to be cancer. It can be anything healthcare related or anything in general in life. You know, there's always hope. You know, sometimes that's all you have to hang on to is hope. And you're never alone and understand that, that when you're going through something like cancer, um, know that you're never alone and there's always support. There's support online. There's your turn to your family, turn to your friends, um, really talk to your doctors, be your own advocate. Make sure you ask questions when you're at the doctor. Don't think that they know all the answers and maybe they're not answering maybe that question that you need an answer to. So don't be scared of healthcare or, or doctors. You know, I think that being your own advocate is very important. And it's just so, so important just to be, um, you know, very involved with your own healthcare. And I just think that with a positive attitude, I'm not saying it all, it all comes out good in the end. But you know, when you have hope and you have that support, I do believe it makes a difference. And I think that it would help in your, um, in your recovery. Thank you so much for that. Hope is good. <laughs> hope is, is very important in a situation like this. So people must keep it alive. I thanks also to the project that you are working on. So uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Josephine. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.